I was born in 1925. I was 14 years old when the war broke out. 78 years ago today, the world began to fully understand what happened during the Holocaust. That's because on January 27, 1945, the Soviet army liberated the Auschwitz extermination camp. And that's where over a million Jewish people met their deaths by the Nazis, met their deaths by the Nazis, met their deaths by the Nazis. So we're going to Saul Goldberg's house right now. We're going to shoot with him a nice podcast. We're going to talk about his experiences, what he thinks about what's going on in the world right now. I've met Holocaust survivors before. My great grandfather was actually a Holocaust survivor. So what's very interesting is that it's very easy to speak to people in, you know, who are young about their experiences. But when you sit down with someone well into their 90s, maybe even hundreds, and you ask them about their experiences firsthand from the concentration camps, it really gives you this, you get this like chilling experience of the spine, <laughs> which really, you know, puts you in their shoes. The whole world knew about it, including the Pope. Nobody didn't care because we're Jewish. That's your family? This is my father's family. Wow. I'm here a grandchild. He didn't took nothing from, from grand. So we're here with Saul Goldberg in Brooklyn, New York. He's a Holocaust survivor. Do you want to tell the people a little bit about your story? Yeah. And where you were born, etc. Yeah. My name begins Saul Goldberg. 1939, the war broke out. In September 1, I was bring up in the yeshiva. My family were Hasidic people. I was born in 1925. I was 14 years old when the war broke out. This picture was in front of my eyes. He took women, they had to take off their underwear and wash the sidewalks. In my city were 11,000 Jewish people. Food was the problem there. The diet was a kilo of flour, a half kilo of sugar, and also very limited beans. Also, he gave us about two kilo potatoes. At the work, they gave us soup. I work a whole day, and also they, they gave us our soup. We came home, it was only for me left a half potato with water. This was my supper. For two years, full two years. What years? In 1942 to 44, I was lodge getter. The hunger is very, very hungry. You see this here? This is a hand wagon. Maybe, I don't know, hundred or maybe more people picked up bodies from the state, put on the hand wagon, they put it to the cemetery. They said to us, we will not kill you. We need a bullet for Soviet Union. You will die like this. Were the Nazis he, ruthless? Were they ruthless? Yeah. They treat us like, they treat us like not like dogs, like garbage. How they talk to you? Would they shoot people for no reason? Not to shoot. They did worse. Shooting is good, but the hang is worse. They did everything. They hit us with everything. I also got hit. Did you see I people saw. die every day? In the dozens. For in the city, nobody bothered me. Nobody. I was there from my eyes, for I said, Lane. You know what they did? They came in trucks to pick them up like garbage. Did you get used to seeing death? I mean, I guess you say, tell I have no more feelings. Not used to it. What's one message you have for the world? Israel is our, the Jewish people is our life insurance. We have to do everything and anytime Israel. Support Israel with God's help. I believe Israel will survive. Do you guys understand that this is a tzaddik sitting here in the flesh? We have a whole house of, of history. We have the tefillin, we have the pictures, the testimony. People want to deny such an atrocity, the Holocaust. How old is this bag? What? Where's the picture of the bag? I want to see it. I, I'll show you too. Sh show me again. Right. How old is this picture? Do we take a look? <laughs> I cannot tell. Uh, if it it's not say. marked, it doesn't say. Over here, just to send away. I need my score. Uh, I you need the magnifier. The magnifier. That, that, uh -huh. <laughs> it's not marked down. It's mad cute. <laughs> My mother, was, maybe I was 10 years old. It's probably about 30, 1935. What do you think about this? What? This is from Israel. You like it? Oh, Yeah. <laughs> 1935. You see in the picture yeah. of the bag? 
Now we have it live in the flesh. See, the bag survived the Holocaust. He survived the Holocaust. The Jewish people survived the genocide. Hi, I'm sitting here with a 100-year-old Holocaust what survivor, he and he wants to talk to my mom. What, what name is him? This is my mommy. This I'm is, coming. This is Mr. Come. Saul. This your sister? This is my mom, my oh, sister. <laughs> you want to give my mother a blessing? Yes. This is my mother, my mom. What's her name? Uh, uh, Netta. I want to wish you, <laughs> you have a son, Belian Hara. Belian Hara. First of all, you're the most looking guy I didn't see for the, maybe for the last 10 years. The most what? Good looking guy. <laughs> Look, look, guy. So next time, Bezrat Hashem, I want to come to see you too. Okay, this was very nice. It was so nice to see you. See you. We just left the house, and Saul is singing because he's so happy. Like, I don't know if they got out, if we can get on video. But anyways, guys, we just had a crazy interview. You know, it makes me really happy to meet these special people. He's a hundred years old. You know, to see someone go through so many atrocities, five years and five months under Nazi regime. If these people are in front of me right now, Mr. Hitler. Kick him right in the glory place. People don't realize that when they wave a free Palestine flag, they're calling for the extermination of the Jewish people because indeed the history of free Palestine actually comes from a couple hundred years ago when the second temple of the Jewish people was destroyed. They renamed the land palace Philistine because that was the biggest enemy of the Jewish people at the time. Waving a Nazi flag and a free Palestine flag truly has no difference. And that's why we do what we do. You know, we gotta spread the message to people, to college students. I get hundreds of DMs from college students saying they're scared to leave their dorms, etc. Listen, I'm here, Shem's here, Len's here. We're gonna take care of you guys. None to be scared of. It's all a bunch of nonsense. Fear exists in the mind. When fear takes over the human mind, it disables it and doesn't allow it to operate properly. So we have to remove the fear and to use our brains to do the right thing. See you next time.